Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity in the Gold Country. First Sunday in November, first Sunday in winter time. I'm sure all those of you who love the dark and love the long evenings will be thrilled that we're back into winter time. Meanwhile, those of us uh, from Ireland will be getting our prescription for antidepressants filled this week. So I imagine that you did um, turn your clock back last night, or you would have been here an hour earlier. And anyone else feel like Halloween is unnecessary this year? I've been wearing a mask and eating candy for seven months now. I don't think I need a day dedicated to it anymore. And as we joke about that, we do remember the origins of Halloween, which are very special for me, obviously, because uh, it goes back into my Celtic heritage. It was the Celts who celebrated Samhain, and the Irish, of course, celebrated Samhain. And Samhain was the New Year's Eve, so Happy New Year. You know, if you're fed up with 2020 and you want to get into the next year, you can be a Celt today and celebrate the New Year. And it's also, of course, uh, Dios de los Muertos in uh, Mexico and maybe in Central America as well. And on this 1st of November, the title for service today is In God We Trust. And at this time, we're going to have the lighting of the Christ candle, and it's a great pleasure to welcome in to the sanctuary John Lumiere Wins. Take it away, John. Thank you, Jerry. So, it's wonderful to see your beautiful faces. Um, it's with great joy and, and real humility <clears throat> that I ask us to congregate around this candle as I light it for the sake of all beings. In the beginning was the one the one presence of the undivided and unmanifest pure spirit of light, light and love. In its generosity, it shared itself, its consciousness and its love in the visible form of creation. We acknowledge this presence within us and as us. The creative energy of the divine feminine and masculine expressing in all our giftedness and creativity. We acknowledge this presence in our companion Mother Earth and in all sentient beings. This universal presence in everything we call the Christ. We light this candle as a visible reminder of that Christ present presence expressing in as and through us in this present now moment. This is the truth. Let us own it. Thank you, John doing that, for gathering us into the light. We're going to start off, as always, with an opening song. And I think I introduced this one two Sundays ago. It's our good friend, Eddie Watkins, Jr. And I am the place where God shows up. enough to bear the burdens that sometimes come living this thing called life am I wise enough to make the right decisions when I'm standing at the fork in the road sometimes I wonder and ponder 
only to realize I'm not alone and there's nothing I have to do on my own because I am the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has its being. I am the place where God shows up. I am the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has its being. I am the place where God shows up. Will I have enough to do the things I need to do to take care of myself? Will I have the health of mind and body to live a life of grace and wholeness. Sometimes I wonder and ponder only to realize I'm not alone and there's nothing I have to do on my own because I am the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has its I am the place where God shows up. I am the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has its being. I am the place where God shows up. I am the place. Place. I am the place where God You are the place and and We are the place I am the place where, where God shows up Once you clap your hands and sing it with me I am the place where God lives Moves and breathes and has its being I am the place where God shows up I am the place where God lives Moves and breathes and has its being. I am the place where God shows up. I am the place where God lives. Moves and breathes and has its being. I am the place where God shows up. I am the place where God lives. Moves and breathes and has its being. I am the place where God shows up. Eddie Watkins, yeah. can I have some more of that? Can we have some more of that? A little more? A little more. I am the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has his speaking. I am the place where God shows up. I am the place where God lives, moves and breathes and has its being. I am the place where God shows up. Eddie Watkins! <laughs> That's from uh, Mile High Church in uh, Denver, actually, is where it was recorded. So we move to our time of invocation today, which is really kind of setting the energy, setting the theme for today. And I know that a lot of people are really missing all of their hugs, because when God shows up, we want a hug, right? Well, I came across a beautiful video that I want to share this morning. That's my invocation. And it's all about hugging, but it might be different than what you were expecting.
Well, actually, that wasn't the video I wanted to share, but it'll do. <laughs> They're teaching us there, aren't they, that it's possible for uh, different species to get along. You know, if animals can do it, maybe Democrats and Republicans could do it. Wow, wouldn't that be amazing? Okay. So, again, we go back to uh, John Lumiere wins, and he's going to read the Daily Word for us today. <clears throat> So our daily word for today is protected. I am safe and secure in God. The protective power of God is always mine to call upon. If I begin to feel off balance or unsafe, I pause to move into a time of sacred prayer. I breathe deeply place my hand on my heart and quietly affirm my divinely inspired wisdom and compassionate love guide me and all others at all times. I am safe. Whether tending to tasks, working at my job, or traveling on vacation, I may move through a range of emotions as I encounter situations that challenge me. No matter what is happening around me, I can respond from this peaceful place within me and remain anchored in spiritual principle. I am free from fear because I trust the presence of God within me. In God, there is nothing to fear. In God, there is only love. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Psalm 16, 1. Thank you, John. And now we have our usual time of prayer. We start by praying for uh, Peg Vielbig, who, if you weren't with us last week, uh, called us to let us know that she has had a recurrence of lung cancer. So we hold her uh, in prayer this morning. We see her as the wonderful spiritual being that she is. And we continue to pray for Sean uh, Bartlett as he continues to uh, do his chemotherapy treatments. And then we also pray this morning for uh, a local family, friends of Tracy, um, Sam Schmidt, a young man who committed suicide, and we pray especially for him and for his family, and seemingly since then Another young person in the same circle also then committed suicide. So very uh, sad, obviously, for those families. So we hold them in love. We send love and light to them all. We continue praying also for Maureen Wright, for Ann Johnson, and for Dale Harder, who is now out of the hospital. We pray for continuing strength and recovery and strength also for his wife. And we pause to pray rain. For a moment, we just use this graphic to visualize the rain falling from the sky and the earth receiving it joyfully, the animals, the plants, and the trees. And so we see that coming our way soon. We also pray in gratitude for the fact that we did not get any really of the high winds that were predicted here, and that we certainly didn't have any fires, which was wonderful. And um, Unity has put out a special little video that I want to share with you now, 
Uh, it's an election time prayer. Let me see if I can share it with you. That didn't work, but we'll try this one. All right. Nope. What is going on? <laughs> the dogs want to come back. Okay. Um, So it looks like that um, it's eluding me. Yeah, that's not it either. So we're just going to skip that and we'll go back to uh, the slideshow. So every week there's always something that uh, goes a little askew. It's good for my humility. Um, so I invite us then to join together in this prayer. There is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as our lives, the all-loving goodness of God, and all is well. And with that, we move into our time of meditation, and so once again, we invite John to do the meditation. <clears throat> So before we begin, if you would just get comfortable as possible, just relaxing, notice breathing, moving the body, you can begin noticing the instant of stillness at the end of the exhale, intending the breathing to be slow and peaceful through your nose if possible. Following the exhale until it ends in stillness for that moment before the inhale begins. Breathing easy. We can just let everything soften a bit. We're all here among friends. There is goodness and love in this space that we share. And there is a deepening silence as we focus together. This silence, this alert presence, the ground of our being, this openness is our source connection. Beneath and beyond our run-on narratives, this stillness reveals the resonances of God's I am reverberating. Try this now. Deliberately stop thinking and notice what is always already here. This silent stillness of our awakened being. This alert presence is our natural state. We can learn to relax our minds, our bodies, our fears and our desires. Then we can go deeper into this open, still presence. Who we really are. With less of the 
run-on narratives that we always seem to be telling ourselves. This silence takes us beyond the mind's world into the realm of primordial awareness. Being our universal intelligence. Silent stillness is the ground of our resonant aliveness. It is the substance of every here and now. This is true regardless of whether we are noticing it or regarding the veil and seeing through the dark glass of our mind-made separation. God is us and all the rest of it. But we have to notice this reality in our own experience. We must consciously choose where we focus our attention. No one can do this for us. So as often as we can remember to remember, come back again, stop thinking. In the silent stillness, notice the living felt experience of being awareness for this moment give your attention to this what do you notice when you're just here this is not just silent still peaceful content and spontaneously responsive. This open presence reveals the spark of the boundless one that we all are. Rest here with deliberation in this holographic fractal of the pure love of our source. This openness, this presence is our own source connection. Always silently here. Our direct experiencing of this, which is all that is as this universe, experiencing and expressing him, her, or itself at the single point of our uniqueness. This one that is, is the one I am. Each of us can say it. I am the one I am. As we lean into this silent presence of our own being, our, our frequency is raised and radiates into the world of our lives and touches everyone we encounter. Thank you. Thank you, John, for that beautiful meditation, deep. Now we have our post-meditation song.
It's called Amazing Things. I know you've heard this before, sung by our singers, but this is sung by the um, person who wrote it, Megan McDonough. Seems like Megan is having a problem connecting with us. There we go. You will do amazing things with the choice each new day brings, and with every step you. Bless the progress that you make The reason you live Is found in every gift you give Love your life, love your dreams You will do amazing things Amazing Yes, 
indeed we will, and we are. Well, as I said at the beginning, uh, my talk title today is In God We Trust. And so I thought I would uh, start off with a piece of scripture from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, in which Jesus calms the storm. It says, Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Yes, indeed, one of the more famous stories from the Gospels, obviously, the calming of the storm. And I need to get rid of this, these guys. Okay, so last week, by mistake, I uh, shared my uh, auto cue with you, so you were seeing all of the words of my talk on the screen. That was unintentional. So anyway, some scripture stories are very relatable to, aren't they? And some are great for metaphysical interpretation, like this morning's story. Some of you may have been caught out at sea in a storm, in a boat or a ship, and you can relate. Or maybe it was air turbulence on a plane. I remember when I was in seminary, we went out to Skellig Vikil, which was uh, featured in the last Star Wars movie. It's this rock about 12 miles off the coast of Kerry. And it was lovely going out, but on the way back, we were just hitting into the waves. And I think I was one of five people out of 80 who didn't get sick. So it was a pretty uh, gruesome little trip back. And then I also remember a flight uh, from St. Louis to Denver just on my second year here in the States. And the plane would just drop almost like 100 feet or so. And I was sitting in the back seat. And the seat of the toilet kept slamming right behind me. So it was pretty terrifying. And just as they say there are no atheists in a foxhole, people start to believe real fast at 30,000 feet in a storm or in a small boat in a squall. Often people say they believe in God, but... That's about it. It doesn't mean they have explored their relationship with that God or that they can tell you anything about the nature of God. But thrown into a storm in their lives, they call out like the apostles in the boat to this often unknown God for a life preserver or for the storm to be quelled. I'm sure we can all identify with that part of the story from some stage in our life and faith evolution. Perhaps this year has felt like being on a sinking ship or at least being in a heck of a storm with COVID-19, race riots, crazy politics, fires, power outages, and throw in the kitchen sink. Maybe you felt more than once that the waves were swamping your boat. Maybe it even crossed your mind that it sure felt like God was asleep at the wheel. In times like this, we probably don't take too kindly to anyone or God saying to us, Oh, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? The ability to rebuke the wind isn't necessarily one of our skills that we learned in Boy Scout, Scouts or Girl Guides. And we are all amazed and interested to know just how Jesus calmed the wind and the waves. Boy, I want to know how to do that, you might say. When fires are all around us, it would be nice to know how to avert them locally, or even calm any gale force winds like those predicted last weekend. And as I said earlier, we did pray for both of those things in the Sunday service that we wouldn't have fires, and we wouldn't have any major wind. And neither of those things came about. Thank you, God. 
But of course then we poo-poo that our prayers had anything to do with what transpired, don't we? Do you know that there are people in our community who spend lots of time in meditation and prayer, praying for our safety and well-being? You see, those people realize that they are part of God, of the divine, and they are not asleep at the wheel. Instead, they are using their God-given gifts of faith and intentionality and visioning to influence the frequency and vibration of our local environment. If you feel that God is asleep at the wheel, then maybe it is you are the one who is asleep. Perhaps it's time to wake up and investigate the power that is within you and to utilize it for good. So why don't we make a start at that right now? How are you feeling today, right before the election? Are you anxious? Are you afraid? Are you jittery? Usually that means that we are not going deeply enough into our hearts. If we use the analogy of the ocean, it means that we are right at the surface level where we can be buffeted about by the winds that get stirred up by the prevailing, the waves that get stirred up by the prevailing wind. This is where we can live in uncertainty and experience all the emotions that go along with that. Where we want to be is at or close to the bottom of the ocean, where any squalls or storms at the surface don't get to touch the calm peace of our souls. And in that beautiful meditation that John just did with us, he led us into that place of calm, of peace in our soul. So let me repeat that, the calm peace of our soul. You know, just saying those words puts us in touch, doesn't it, with the energy of the free, or the frequency of it. It is there at that level that we can pray or think, all is well, and know that it is a truth of our being and a truth about the world despite appearances. You see, elections are all about dualism and a dualistic point of view. And dualism is all about labeling and judging for or against, good or bad. And metaphorically, the world of judgment is the world that came into play once Adam and Eve were out of the garden. What we are trying to do is to get that back to that place in the garden. And that's why it's so important in times like contentious elections or divisive politics that we seek to look and find the single eye view of what's going on. If we see factions on the left or the right going at it or lining up to take each other on in whatever form, we are the people who are called to find a middle path to bring those folks back together. We need not to be distracted by this double vision that is so prevalent at this time but rather instead hold the vision of a united humanity. But in order to do that, we must not see ourselves as in one camp or the other. We need to detach from the hooks that make us think we must take sides here. When we want to take sides, we have lost the plot. We are then once again mired in dualistic thinking. So we must resist this temptation to feel more emotionally drawn to one side against the other. Why is that important? Because that old paradigm is a game of divide and conquer. We tend to think that someone out there is playing us, playing on our fears, to make us choose sides and be against others. And while that may be true, the real influencer is within our own minds which is always willing to play that game of me versus you, or me versus the other. Any mind games that have us thinking anything but a united humanity is a temptation to lower our vibrational living. We can't afford to go there. We cannot afford the luxury of a divisive thought, like we won and you lost. Na 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 na. Do we hear how childish that is? 
We must grow up. We have to wake up. We must have a win-win mentality in order to make any progress going forward to really solve these major issues that we're dealing with. And I know that in the past few weeks there have been a lot of talk about COVID fatigue. It's a real thing. People are worn out from wearing masks, from social distancing, from washing their hands for 20 seconds. And they are being a little bit more careless about maybe taking risks. And hence we see an uptake in the new cases. And if you think that isn't factual or scientific, go talk with the nurses who are doing the local tracing follow-up with people who get infected. Now it makes sense that when we are emotionally or mentally worn out, that we suffer a drop in empathy for ourselves and others. In addition to COVID fatigue, there is also a compassion or empathy fatigue happening around us, maybe within us. And all of this when we stand at the precipice of a new day or a new beginning for this country post-election. The last four years have laid bare the underbelly of so much that ails our consciousness as a people, so much generational pain that has not been processed. And right now, the last thing we need is compassion fatigue. So we need to find a way to restore that empathy and compassion within ourselves. And the election is just a first step in the process of moving forward to begin a time of real healing of the soul of our nation. And that's going to require all hands on deck. And more than that, it will require all hearts on deck. Let me repeat that. It will require all hearts on deck. That means, first and foremost, hearts that have forgiven any and all people or events from the past four years that have wounded or offended us. We must move forward with malice towards none and charity for all. We have had a lot of things imprinted upon our minds and hearts over the last four years particularly, but even going back beyond that, during our lifetime perhaps. So it's time to clean house of old grudges, of old hurts, and create a new space for positivity going forward, for compassion. It's surely a time for a new in our country, with a rededication of this nation to the founding spiritual principles upon which it is based. And it's also the time for acknowledgement of ancient wounds that need healing, wounds that have been inflicted perhaps by our ancestors on other groups. It's a time for honesty right down to the bone. It is the only way forward or the only way to process unresolved pain. So we are being given an incredible opportunity to be a generation who finally cross the Rubicon and undo so much wrong from the past. We cannot afford the attitude that after Tuesday, let's all just sit back and relax, take a break. No. This is just the first step. It is only the beginning. And don't think that you're too old, that you can sleep through whatever else needs to be done. We must believe that like Jesus the Christ in the boat, that all power to heal and forgive is within us. All power to quell these storms, to control the environment around us, the storms that are tearing us apart right now. You know what they are. And you also know that you are the only ones who can address them with the Christ Spirit in your heart. The Spirit of God in us is never dormant or asleep. It is never unavailable to us. It just requires a willingness on our part to listen and to be willing to follow instruction. For instance, like forgive that politician that you despise. Pray for your so-called enemies. Be willing to come from a place of understanding with people like the militias. Why are they the way they are? Why are people racist? There is a story there, and unless we are willing to suspend judgment, we will never know or find out what caused them to become who they are. It is our willingness to extend love to where it's never been that will ignite the Christ in others 
who have no idea of the real power and presence within them. It's been a wild ride this year, but it is worth all the effort in the end to bring forth the Christ in yourself and in others. So would you rather hold on to your hate and small-mindedness than allow the Christ to radiate forth from your heart? We must choose, or we have to give up something in order for the Christ to extend forth from us. You know, love is within us. We just need to get all of the ways that we're blocking that love from being extended out of the way. My favorite saying of the Gospel of Thomas is number 70, which says, If you bring forth that what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. What a powerful, powerful idea that is. If we practice forgiveness, if we realize that we can help others discover the Christ in themselves by our treating them as the Christ, especially when they're behaving abominably, we will know that it is we who are the children of the living Father. Because we know it's a power greater than ourselves that's allowing us to do that, because our egos would never choose that. So that's what's being put before us on our plates at this time, to know the love that the divine has for all. And we must decide to choose love over hate, forgiveness over revenge, because all are our brothers and sisters. And we must purge our hearts of all low vibrational energies that we hold towards any and all of them. I know it's not easy, but with the help of God, all things are possible. We can do amazing things. If we do that, it will save us. It will make us happy. It will make us true children of God, and it will create a society in which all people will be happy. If we don't, it will destroy us, divide us one from the other, and leave us very unhappy. And so the choice is ours. So I want us to just take a moment and to cast our minds very lightly back over the last four years. And we come with an open and forgiving heart, with an erasing heart, an erasing spirit. And we allow the Spirit of God to just wipe clean our memories, wipe clean our minds. We ask that the Spirit of God, at depth, release all of the things that we are holding on to that have become obstacles for us, that have become burdens for us. So that as we go forward, that the Spirit of God can have its way within us, that the mind that Jesus had within him, the Christ mind, can be within us, that we would have an openness to include everybody, that we would have compassionate hearts and empathy for, for both sides of the equation, who have equally been caught up in all of this craziness. Now I invite you now just to envision three things. Three things you can envision coming into being, not based on the outcome of the election, but based on who you are or what you want to see post-election. Just intend those things. Vision those things. And now send loving energy into that matrix, into that field that you are creating and about to step into. And so it is.
<laughs> and so we move on to our power statement and our power words for November. Like rivers flowing from one source, we are all connected. What an important thought, and of course these were put together sometime last year, so really uh, a wonderful slide for us to carry with us through this month. Like rivers flowing from one source, we are all connected. And that means that we have the ability to influence one another also. So we come to our prosperity affirmation. And again, if you want to make a donation, uh, you can always go to our website, unitygold.us, and just click on the Donate button. So this is our love offering prayer. Divine Beloved, allow me to give with complete ease and abundance, knowing that together we are the unlimited source of all. Let me be an easy, open conduit for our prosperity. Let me trust that all my needs are always met in amazing ways, and that it is safe to give freely as my heart guides. And equally, let me feel as wildly open to receive as to give, so that our light can shine without restriction. So I want to thank Claudia, uh, Martin, and John for inspiring me to uh, choose this song, I Dreamed of Rain by Jen Garrett and J.D. Martin. Hi, everybody. My name is Jan Garrett. I'm J.D. Martin. And it's raining. <laughs> I dreamed of rain, and the rains came. I dreamed of a rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and clear I dreamed of a rain and the rains came And peace spread over the land I dreamed of a rain and the rains came Soft and easy, sweet and I dreamed of a rain, and the rains came, and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of summer, and the winds changed, and the green was easy, and the rivers ran clear. I dreamed of summer, and the winds changed, and peace spread over the land. And the flowers bloom in the desert And the air is fresh and clear I dreamed of a rain and the rains came And peace spread over And the earth sang, and the 
sound was easy and the song was clear I dreamed of heaven and the earth sang And peace spread over the land And the ancient pain is forgotten And the Father's debts are clear heaven and the earth sang and peace spread over the land I dreamed of a rain and the rains came soft and easy sweet and clear I dreamed of a rain and the rains came and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of a rain and the rains came soft and easy, sweet and clear. I dreamed of a rain and the rains came and peace spread. song is of course a lot more deeper than just the rain isn't it so again this coming week we have the spiritual exploration with Greg Braden if you want to join us at 10 a.m. on Tuesday we didn't have it last week because of the power outage Wednesday morning Ki Jong Qigong at 8 30 and again uh, obviously if there's any emergencies you can always call on us if you need to evacuate Reminder of the distance healing. This is in our e bulletin every Thursday. If you want to call any of these people for a treatment, please do so. And as I mentioned in preparation for Thanksgiving service on November 29th, I'm inviting you to write a short piece on how 2020 has given you perfect vision, seeing this year and your experience through a spiritual lens. So just simply respond to the e bulletin with your submission. The social group meets on Thursday mornings. And now we have a really exciting announcement. Drum roll. Hi, I'm Stowe Daly. And I'm Karen Taylor Good. Together, we are Stowe Good. And we are really looking forward to becoming to your center, virtually, in spirit, this very coming weekend. As we all know a bit too well, the world is going through some big changes right now. At times, the darkness can seem overwhelming. So we've put together some messages and some songs, one in particular that I actually have to listen to at least once a day, mm -hmm. that may actually have an answer for what that darkness is really all about. Yeah, so put on your most comfortable sweatpants. Or just stay in your jammies. <laughs> and join us for our message and music entitled Ordinary Life. See you soon. So next Sunday, our uh, Sunday service will be um, still good, giving us message and music. And I don't know how far forward you wanted to put it, but you might have wanted to put your clock forward four months, like some people. And if you must be a Karen, be this Karen. That's a Will and Joke, Will and Grace reference, if you don't know the show. She's one of my favorite characters on TV. All right, so we come to our closing song, our circle of love. in my 
my life is growing because I choose love. Love's always present. It's what I'm made of. I choose love. We are a part of each other. That can't be undone. I choose love. I just feel so grateful for that song that it's our closing song. So we pray together. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is because I am, and all is well. Okay, so let me uh, stop the recording. And now I must, let's see, the participants, all right, mute, all right. let's see. All right, I think. I think you can unmute yourselves now. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Yeah. There we are. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi. 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 Let's make sure that your view says gallery view, and that way you get to see everybody. Oh, okay. <gasps> Blessing. What a blessing to see everybody. Yep. Gallery. Oh, oh that's love. great. Hi, <laughs> Patricia. Hi, Patricia. I like your little harp there, Rob. Very nice. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> we should have had a dress up for Halloween. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah.
Bye. Good enough. Let's see what else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice talk, Gary. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Beautiful time. You know why you're yeah. the one? Yeah. No, you're not. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, John. Oh, no. Thank you, John. You, Great meditation. Yes. Nice meditation. Yes. Nice meditation. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Wonderful meditation. Yes. Good to see all of you. Thank you, Claire. Oh, there's Claire. So have hold positive thoughts and send lots of love this week. That nice to see begins. everyone. Lots of love this week. Awesome. Yeah. Love okay. and intentions. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Love you. Yeah. Have a great week. Love you. Love you all. Thanks for joining us as always. Okay. Yeah. Next week.